I read that you both actually were into art before you became actors, that you actually drew and stuff, and you earned your money by, by drawing, by, by making art, is that true? Yeah, I mean, Norman probably more than I did, but when I was uh, growing up in Seattle, all my friends were musicians, and I suck at all things musical, so uh, I used to sell paintings in bars when my friends' bands were playing, and that's how I paid rent for They're years. They're probably worth a lot of money now. Probably. <laughs> like five bucks. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And you, um, you also uh, did, went to art, I think. I used to have a gallery in New York. Uh, wow. Yeah, called Collective Hardware with some friends. But I've done shows in Berlin, in Frankfurt, in Munich, in Paris, in Spain, in New York, and all over. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And now you, um, and I think you were both lured into the City of Angels by ladies and then got into acting. Is that? You, you, I think you did your homework. I did my homework. Yeah, because you, I think you had a girlfriend, she was a caster, and, um, and you fell in love, but then the lady left you. But then you sort of, um, you actually were... Jeez, this is like, this is your life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had this, this, uh, I, I actually followed a girl, and then she dumped me and got married. And She's regretting that now. I had to make a lot of friends, real quick. Yeah, and you, yeah. you worked in a motorbike shop or something like that. I did, it was called Dr. Carl's Hog Hospital. And, and then you were fired. Jesus. <laughs> Who is this lady? <laughs> I know everything. Yeah, I got fired. And then you were really pissed off, and then you went to a party, got really pissed, and did this dramatic entrance. I'm and just then... gonna hand you the mic. <laughs> because I love that story, how you yeah. got into, into, and then you did theater work, I, I think. I, well, I mean, theater work, I did one play. Uh, is that it? And then you were, yeah. you... And then I got, uh, a, a lady that was into casting saw me in the play. And then sent me out for movies. I, the first movie was uh, Mimic with Guillermo del Toro. Wow, yeah. that's very, very lucky. <laughs> very lucky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That means you're awesome, right? <laughs> your German is brilliant. Thanks. People can go up to me all day long and say, "You're shy, that." I go, "I'm awesome too." <laughs> <laughs> it's a never... term of a demon, yeah, actually. Vigit. Super. Super good. What, what I'd be interested in is, um, do you remember, for instance, the very first time you were on set? What um, scene you had and how you felt about it? Uh, yeah, the, the, first, the first person I met on set was Andy, and he gave me a great big hug. It was? Yeah. It was the day before we shot the oh, barn. No, no, I was just thinking oh. about something. <laughs> I, thought you were like, I thought you were like, no, it was me. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, it was Andy and he gave me a great big hug and said, welcome to the family. And it was the actually a very perfect episode because, am I holding this already? Right? Um, it was the barn sequence where I'm meeting the cast for the first time, the characters meeting the group for the first time, and we're supposed to be a little awkward and kind of uncomfortable. And I think it was perfect because I was very nervous and uncomfortable through the whole process going up to it. And, it was amazing. Yeah, you, you, you didn't have a thankful uh, position at the beginning, did you? Oh, in the very beginning, I was just the schmuck who opened the gates. And, um, <laughs> the V-gates. The V-gates. And that was also a similar thing. I had walked on set and Scott Gimple was there, which was I, you know, and I was like, hey, what character am I playing? And because uh, I didn't know anything when I took the job. And he's like, well, you know, you're playing this guy. It's not going to turn out well for him. And then I went and opened the gates. And then you all walked into Alexandria, and I was... And then you died. And then I did it cut to death. Hey! <laughs> it's a walker stalker. Hey. <laughs> Brilliant!
like Ezekiel, first he like, just cuts their heads off straight away. Um, so I think that would be really cool if they had her in the show, definitely. I think the Whisperers are amazing. Do you still feel insecure? Are you... Uh, you know what, I mean, they come through. It comes through sometimes when I, when I have a moment to think for myself. When I'm working, I don't think about it. It's when, when, it, when they say cut, and they say wait, and I sit there and I start thinking, am I any, it was that good? I don't know. And, uh, and so it was nice because Michael was always over on the side, never saying anything. He just sits there and looks at me and goes. I can really imagine it. Exactly, you know, it's just so I see Abraham over there. The ghost of Abraham. <laughs> So I know I'm okay. I know I'm okay. And do you think there's any chance that Michael might actually direct her? Uh, I hope so. I hope so. I, I think he'd be amazing. And uh, but but he's very busy actually right now, moving on. So so it's uh, it's hard to to see when he might have the time. But I hope he does. He was a very big deal for me that uh, that there was someone standing off watching, and I could look and I said, you know, what are you thinking? And, and he was uh, he was always like. Uh, can I ask you, Sarah, because I think you're also like one of the people from the cast that promoted a lot of like traditions. For instance, if somebody died, then you, I think you had the idea to do a dinner and all these. Can you tell us a little bit about these traditions that you came up with? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was really kind of a group effort. I think um, Chandler will tell you it's not necessarily the best part of who I am. Sometimes it's obnoxious, but I like reflexively mother everyone. <laughs> I smothered this poor kid so many times. I'd be like, what do you need? He was like, some space. <laughs> um, but so yeah, I mean, the first season, uh, you know, I mean, Emma slept on my couch when she was looking for a place to live. Steven spent a couple days sleeping in a spare room. Like, it mattered to me that we form as much of a family that we, as we could, um, partly because we were all in location, except for Chandler and Melissa. You know, there wasn't really anybody who lived in Atlanta, um, an irony. Um, but it also just, it, it was a story that really mattered. And stories get better when the people who are telling them treat each other like family. And I'd read in, I think, Vanity Fair that uh, James Gandolfini, every time somebody got killed from The Sopranos, would take everyone out to dinner and celebrate them. And so we started doing death dinners that first season. Um, and they were, they were really small and they were really public. We could go out to a, a, any, you know, we went to Mary Max for the first time and like nobody knew who we were. And now they're like a, a thing and you have to get a private room and you have to make sure nobody knows. But it, it started with a lot of just kind of humbly loving people and wanting them to feel supported when they left. I read today breaking news that you are going to play possibly Wolverine. No. <laughs> I mean, obviously not now, because, uh, you know, still on this, this show, whatever this show is. Um, but, um, yeah, I said that because uh, I think it would be kind of fun, and, the, and it's, the role is kind open. Of fun. Well, and also because Hugh Jackman, who played it before, is, like, really, really tall. And, um, and uh, actually, I've heard a lot today, like, oh, you're so tall, and so Kleiner. And I'm like, cool. And I'm like, well, I think you're pretty normal. No, normal, yes, normal. Exactly. Uh, regular. Average. <laughs> Man height. Um, and uh, yeah, Wolverine is small. So I was like, oh, well, for it. But um, yeah, at some point in the future. Talking. A little afro. You know, I was growing my afro back, but two heads of hair is too much. Yeah. So shave this hair. Now I've got the one. And then I just, you know, I just whip it back and forth. Did you whip it back and forth and sometimes forget you and don't actually have the wig on your head? You do. I, I hit myself in the face many times. <laughs> and and uh, actually. Actually, the thing that I remember is, is uh, or actually the thing I forget is when I'm at lunch, you know, you gotta be careful of the gravy. No soup, you know? You know, if you, you, you need to, if you, it's like, blah, oh, ah, ah, throw that back. Or tie it up or, or, eat, or eat your soup very properly. Well, you won't starve if anything, you know, if push comes to shove, you can always sort of, you have like a bit of gravy on your locks. Gravy on your locks. You know what? That, that doesn't even sound good in theory. <laughs> that does, that, there's nothing that sounds good. <laughs> gravy on your locks. Oh, that's nice. No, no, it's not. Sounds nasty. It's, it sounds nasty. Thank you very much. <laughs>
Look, see, you're funnier than you look at. Look at how funny you are. You are hilarious. Look at her. She's still laughing. And um, now you're both uh, into photography, I think. Do you, yeah. do, 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 do you do pictures on set? Yeah, I mean, you know, we all have phones uh, that take great pictures, so I think probably everybody's into photography at this point, right? But Norman is super talented, and I like to take pictures of donkeys. Your pictures are great. What are you talking about? Uh, <laughs> Maybe you could do an exhibition in, in Germany sometime with your artwork or your photo photography. Yeah, I, I, I've done shows here. Oh, okay, uh, so, yeah. uh, with the photography as well. Oh, okay. The photography, but I had three short films uh, that were all really weird that played in Berlin. Oh, yeah. I never I, knew that. Yeah, I know Berlin very well. They, they hit me with a truck. They ran, they ran me over. Uh, Did they? Yeah, I was in the hospital in you Germany. You didn't know your homework on that one? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was a very, very inside information. I didn't find that. No, it's all over the place. Everybody, oh, damn it. You're last in the... Uh, uh, yeah, I have a metal eye socket. My fingers is all titanium. Oh uh, shit! Yeah, so I got I got ran over. I, I went to the Berlin Film Festival and I never showed up because I got hit by a truck. Oh no, that's awful. Yeah, and it's a pain in the ass to go through airports with him now. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Sets off every alarm. <laughs> I mean, you got injured on, uh, on set because, I mean, I think you guys do your own stunts and stuff. Well, you definitely do. And you landed in the hospital once, I, I read. The hospital? Oh, yeah, 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 I did. I'm not going to talk about that. But I got hit with a gun. It hit me actually in the same eye uh, oh. and cut me open. And I had to have, like, little stitches and stuff. Yeah, and Andy broke my nose this year in a fight. Yeah. You're kidding. Yeah. It looks quite good, though. Thank you so yes, much. Yes, you're welcome. It doesn't show, doesn't it? It's mean? totally crooked, but thank you. I can't, no, I can't breathe. Um, but yeah, 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 he's like, oh, no, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, no. He meant to you do. don't believe yeah, it. He totally fucking meant to do it. <laughs> I called Norman the night before, and I'm like, I know he's going to hit me. And then he called me going on the way to work, like drink some, drinking a lot of coffee. He was like, yeah, so I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. And I, I called Jeff, I'm like, he's going to punch you. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to happen. And he gets Not very it. excited on set. Very he, emotional. He, yeah, he, he's, uh, yeah, he gets fired up. But it, yeah. Um, because you just said that shortly before you got the role, you, it was like financially you had to move back to your parents. Did you have like um, those sort of turning points a lot of times in your career that, where you sort of thought, Am I doing the right thing? Is acting really the right thing? Yeah, I had a, um, that was my, my major one. After Medicus, I, um, I thought Medicus was going to be my big deal. And I was going to like launch my career. And it was my first lead. It was Stella Skarsgård and Ben Kingsley. And it was like that. And Elias and Fafi. And it was going to be amazing. And it was amazing in Germany and in Spain um, and Austria and other places, but did nothing for me in England and America. And that was quite disheartening for me. I was like, God, I really should have learned German um, in the time. I really should have, actually, uh, while I was filming. There is still time. <laughs> um, yeah, and, then, and that was the lowest after that, because it happened to me a few times that I was like, this is the job, this is the job, and then didn't quite work. But everything has been a little step. But Medicus, I thought, was going to be the job. And when that didn't work out, I, I found it quite tough. Um, and I did another film, you know, like a, a sci-fi film, but nothing really that was going to launch me up. And I, I went to go and see Stellan, actually, in his, uh, his country house in Sweden for a little bit of a pet talk, really. I was like, I need to go and see someone who I respect, who's older and has been around and understands it. And um, we had a night where we got drunk and like had a big talk and he really like boosted me up again and, and reminded me that, because I got stuck into a pattern of trying to give them what they wanted in auditions and stuff and he reminded me that I should stick to myself and my instincts and, and be me in the auditions. And then the next audition I did, I got very, very close to. And then the next audition was Walking Dead. So it, it just, it's timing and you have to pick yourself up. But yeah, I was around 32. Um, and what I've learned definitely is that it's so much just about sticking to it. Um, and it's hard to do that. Lots of people that I trained with or have acted with in the past stopped because they wanted to have a family and, and just have some kind of stability. And the reality is, is that you, that's never guaranteed, you know? <laughs> like, keep going, otherwise you're a pussy. <laughs> just like, keep going. Like, if you really, like, in the artistic world, you just have to keep going. Because it might happen when you're 40, 50, 60, if you really want to do it, you just have to keep going. 
How lucky we are that you stuck with it. How lucky I am that I stuck with it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, everything's my literally my life has just completely flipped around in two years. It's been amazing. Oh, lovely yeah. story. Thank you.